Hi guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modern Bench, and here we are back with something I know a lot of you have been longing to see. And this is actually part 33 now of this uh, beginner's build of the B52 from Ravel Monogram. It's actually a monogram kit that was uh, reboxed by Ravel and Hasegawa and various other companies, I believe. Anyway, um, pushing forward, if you remember the last video, we got all the main painting done. We've added, we've added all the camouflage and everything, and we've added all the black around the fuselage. So that's all done now. So the next thing we have to consider about is painting the fronts of the engines. Okay, so I've never I've never done that. I should have done that when they, when they were just wings, but uh, I'll be honest, I just forgot. I didn't ever, I never intended to leave them till the end. Um, and also we need to look at getting some decals on here, and then we're gonna do some weathering. So <clears throat> why do I do the decals now? <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat this morning. If you um, remember, guys, this is a beginner's series, so it's going to be going back to basics. So basically, um, why do I do decals now? Well, I've seen people weather their models before and then put the decals on. The trouble is, the decals are part of the paint job. They're part of the scheme of the aircraft. So if, if, you, if you get a, a, a dirty streak across the wing here, say... And, um, you know, from this air conditioning vent, if you get a dirty streak across there and there's a decal here, yeah, the vent is going to, the, the, the streak is going to be over the decal as well. It's not just going to be on the paint and then you put a bright, clean decal over it. It's going to be on the decal as well. Unless, of course, they keep the um, the insignia or whatever the decal is there to depict and it has to keep that spotlessly clean. So the first thing we need to do is look at where the decals are going to go and... Uh, and which ones we're going to use for a start because I've got so many different choices here. So here are the choices I've got. So first of all, this one here, this is the very small decal sheet that comes with the monogram issue of the kit. You can see this one's 1989 and I've got the instructions for that one here. So you can see that all you're getting are these, these shark's teeth here. You're getting the insignias FF and GG for the sides of the, of the fuselage. We're getting the stars and bars there, USAF there, and we're getting some tail markings, and that is about it, okay? And we're getting the stars and bars for the sides of the fuselage as well. But that is about it. Now, I'm not quite sure NN isn't on here. Maybe I've already cut that off. I'll have to look again. But um, th there's also a stripe that goes along the side of the wing tank there. Looks like I've cut something out here, but not... I don't know, <laughs> a bit strange. Anyway, um, so that's choice number one. It's weird at the bottom of that deck was gone. Choice number two would be the Revell option. Now, if you've got this Revell kit, then you've got a much better decal set. So here we've got, for a start, we've got two different options. We've got some massive tail insignia there, and we've got all the walkways here in decals, which I've already showed you how to do in paint. Doing them in paint, as you can see, is a far neater job than trying to get these decals all in place when you consider they're all broken up into various bits and pieces. So, um, yeah, my recommendation is to paint them. If you remember, we did the tail planes as well. If you haven't seen it, go back and have a look. It's all um, it's all very interesting and, and all sort of geared towards the beginner. And rather than just sort of throwing the kit together and, and, and showing you that there's a gap here and there and shoving some filler in and sanding it, I'm showing you how to avoid the gap, what to do about the gap, how to fill the gap, how long it should be left. I try and show you everything as if you're a beginner to build one of these. And a lot of people think this isn't the right kit for a beginner. I think it's a perfect kit for a beginner, other than its size, it's a bit wieldy to handle, but um, it's a very, very basic, very, very simple kit that has a lot of general skills required to get a nice model out of it. You've got seam work, um, you've got raised panel lines, also, there's a bit of scribing to do. You've got, you know, the Bombay is a bit of a mess. And, and I'll show you how to get all around that and make a really nice job of it. So there we go. So the Revell option has got all those decals. And as I say, you've got the different options here. So we've got the um, 337th, December 71. And we've got the 367th, December 71. So you've got the different um, the different insignias there. You've got uh, Florida, USA, Giant Voice. Um Orlando where the action is and we've got also um oh sorry that's giant faces the bombing op competition um and then here we've got big big country bomber that looks like Texas is it 
That looks like Texas to me. Anyway, uh, there we go. So um, there we are. So job done. Um, I'm not going to use these because I'm going to save these for another build if I do a proper one and rescribe it and everything. And also on this one you get all the stencils and everything there. Um, so the third option we've got is this one here, which is an aftermarket decal set, which you can buy from Hannant's for like £3. I've seen it on eBay for about a tenner. Well, go to Hannant's, you can get it for about £3. Um, and this is all basically for different variants. You can see we've got the same shark's mouth there. And we've got the side logos. And up here, there, this is the B-52D Linebacker 2 Bombing Campaign Vietnam War. So um, you can actually build that version there using this decal sheet. The only thing to bear in mind if you do get these decals, I might even use these, we'll see. Um, if you look at these decals here, I need to stand up so I look under the light. Looking at these here now, if I catch them in the light, you can see they've got a carrier film around them. Around the edge, there's a clear film. Okay, so if you if you cut this out roughly, if you just cut down there, cut along there, cut along there, put it in water, that stars and bars will come off of the backing paper. With these decals, they're done old school style -y, how they always used to be, and there's no carrier film around there. The carrier film is right over the paper, so you need to cut these out as neatly as you can. And I would suggest cutting them with scissors rather than a knife, because when you cut with a knife, it tends to kind of plow a line through the paper and it raises both sides. Whereas if you cut with a good sharp pair of scissors, it shears it and you get a nice clean cut. Right, so I'll bring you in close on this. Now bear in mind, this is a very sharp knife. It's a new blade. So the result won't be as bad as um, it could be if the blade was blunter or more blunt, should I say. But basically I'm going to pull that knife along there. Okay, just like that. So I've made a cut. And then next to it, to the right of it, I'll do a scissor cut. Okay, now I don't know if I can show you this, but if you can see in the light there, you can see on this side of the knife cut, there's like a raised edge. As it comes through, it kind of, if we were looking at it end on, but looking at it there, it's kind of like this. Okay, what it does, as the knife cuts, it pushes the paper aside, so it sort of leaves a mound. It's much, much like ploughing a field. Whereas with the scissors, it's shearing it off. So if you look at the scissor cut, close up, you can see it's very, very sharp. It's very, very crisp. And there's no raised edges. Whereas with the knife cut, there's a raised edge on there. So when you're cutting out your decals, if you're going to cut them really close to the edge, you're far better off. What you want to do is cut around the area roughly like so. Okay, just cut it out like so. So you can cut all them out in one. Just like that okay and then cut across there and then if you want to cut them nice and close to the edge go right to the edge it's not very close is it you can go right to the edge with your scissors and cut them out okay and always avoid doing this avoid coming to the end because you can see when you come to the end it pushes up a little lump always try and cut into the corner like this okay so cut into the corner using the blade don't go right to the end don't do don't do that i'm not going to do it as an on run the decal but if you go right to the end it actually sort of raises a bit as you cut it so go in so that the cut isn't finished and then we can come and do the same here and we can do the same here now obviously with these decals because they've got the the minimal carrier film around the edge you don't really need to worry about it too much but I'm just showing you how it's done okay now this radius here if you keep the circle to the side this to the left side of the blade now if you're left-handed I'm sorry I don't know what you would do but you just keep the keep it to the left so you can see always see what you're cutting it doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to be using solvents and stuff to settle it all down in and, and then clear coats to blend it all in but you just want to get it as close as you can okay so again we come around there and go in like so just like that just 
take a little bit more out of that corner. There we go. So there we are. That's your that's your decal cut out. Very very close to the edges and everything. So as I say, with these, because you've got the carrier film, you don't really need to do it. You might decide to do it on here because you've got these huge areas of carrier film in here. You might decide to cut them out like that and put them on separately. But um, there we go. So on the same here with these, with these tail flashes, you might decide to um. I have I have lost another half of these decals. You might decide to um to cut them down as well because you've got that carrier film on there. Remember, carrier film is what gives you the risk of silvering. And silvering, if you haven't seen my Spitfire build, I've done a 130 second scale hobby boss Spitfire, you'll see silvering on there. Silvering is a pain in the ass. It's where you've got like areas like this, where you've got a lot of carrier film in between the letters. You can see there, if I catch it in the light, you can see you've got this carrier film, this clear film, and that's basically a clear decal. And if you get any air bubbles or anything under there, it looks like a silver. It's, it's not, it's where there's air between the two. Um, and you will get that on matte paint and everything, which is why we gloss coat before we put decals on. You don't have to gloss coat, and certainly there are people out there that are you know, adamantly against it. But I, I always do, <clears throat> excuse me, I always do, just as a bit of security to not get silvery. This paint on here, if you remember, it's a Holford's acrylic, and it's, if you can see, it's quite rough to the finish. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a very, very gentle sand down, and then I'm going to... Um, Put some clear cut on it because that's where those those tail flashes there those usaf 50677 that's where that's going to go across there so there we go now i'll get the camera sorted and get everything moved out and see if i can find the rest of these decals see where we're going from here okay so i found the rest of these they were in the bottom of my envelope and i've creased them up so they're not going to be usable now these decals are so old they're probably not going to be very usable anyway so um what i've decided to do I've decided to use this sheet, but unfortunately they don't come with all the stars and bars and the USAF and everything, but they come with everything else. So I'm going to give these a go and see how they work. Um, so we'll, I'm going to take one of the decals that we're not going to use. I'll see if I can use that Allmark symbol there. And I'll put that in some water and see how it performs um, before we make the final decision. And then I think we'll go on and add some, uh, some clear. So I'll cut this one out here. This isn't actually a decal, this is just their company logo. So we'll see what happens because sometimes with these aftermarket decals, sometimes they expect you to add a, this is another great tip for doing decals, unless you want to use warm water. If you're going to use cold water, just put some on your bench like that. And then you can... Uh, just put the decal in it and let it soak up. We'll blow that soaking up fast. Um, yeah, sometimes they have no carrier film on them at all and you have to actually uh, apply a carrier film yourself. You put an aerosol spray on there and that will um, that will act as your carrier film. So we shall see. If this one just falls apart, then that's what we need to do. I'm going to put some water on top of that one. We'll see how it all goes. This is how decals used to be, the old school, like the old Airfix kits we used to buy as kids and stuff. You know, you'd put the sheet in the water and everything would come off together. So, um, yeah, this, uh, we're, we're spoiled these days. You know, some of the decals you get in kits these days are just amazing. So that's still soaking, so we'll leave that for another couple of minutes. Um, and in the meantime, we can go on and cut these out. So... I don't think I'll be using these, but we'll see just in case. If these turn out to be an absolute waste of time, then uh, I'm not too bothered. As I say, they were like two pounds. There we go. So we need that one. We're not going to use this one. That's rubbish there. The other thing is make sure you when you're doing these decals you get these little letters or numbers make sure you cut them out because they're often little decals on their own and they will float around in the water and they will get stuck on your like they get stuck underneath this decal or on it or on the surface of it or whatever and it's really is a pain that you don't want to be uh, dealing with so always cut them off you see them on here you've got the go away you've got the little letter there JJ there so just 
just cut that off you know once you've identified what it is I mean these are so simple it doesn't matter but usually with um usually with with the decals there's hundreds of them and you sort of cut the number off as you go one by one but if you've seen the review I've just done on the um, Sukhoi 33 um, absolutely amazing kit and it's got three decal sheets in it it's um it's it's hours it's weeks of work just doing the decals I think so let's just see how this one is going yeah and you can see that starting to slide off there now so we can see that we've got the um the carrier film there is the same size as the paper so we have got carrier film and it is quite tough I can't just rip it apart so it looks like they might be quite nice I'm not sure how they'll settle down how they'll respond to uh, set and sold I think we'll get a scrap wing we'll get our scrap wing out of the box give them a go so we've got our scrap wing here uh, where are we going to put we'll put it here here where it's slightly shiny and we'll see how it goes over those rivets and panel lines and stuff so I'm just gonna give it a fighting chance let's just place that down on there Fact, I think what I'll do is I will lift that away it's actually very tough indeed um, and I'm going to move some micro set and sol we'll see how it responds so micro set the blue one we'll brush some of that on first and then we'll take our decal come on and we shall lay it down and just brush out the brush out the excess water, set, air, whatever. Okay, and then I've got this lovely little thing here which is a, a decal tool. It's basically a sponge on a stick and you can roll the decal down or you can smooth it down with this end okay so that's gone down nicely so remember we've got some set under it so we'll get some more set and paint it over the top So that's that done and then we'll leave that a few minutes and I'll come back okay so that's had a few minutes now to uh, to settle down so you can see it's kind of it's kind of starting to pull down so as per the instructions with the micro set I've left it a few minutes and then given it a rub with a cloth so now we can come along with our micro sole and just brush them over the top now what's nice about this because it's got a matte surface the actual micro sole is laying on the surface rather than just all chasing away so there we go we can put that on there like that and then we can just leave that and see what happens what you want to do when you use micro sole don't touch the decal because if it's working it's softening it it will become almost like paint and as soon as you touch it it'll just fall apart so put that on like that and we'll see how that responds and this is basically all I'm doing here guys is just a test to see how these decals work I've never heard of them before all marked decals but as I say it's a very cheap set um, and it does all sorts of G's and H's and everything I believe yeah D F G and H that so you've got a load of different choices there um, and it was so cheap I bought two of them because it's just a couple of quid you know it's a bargain you can see all the different versions you get um, the sheet number is S18 and you've got this one this is the B52 linebacker then you've got the B52F Thunder Express 
And then you've got B-52H, uh, bombing competition, RAF. And then you've got um, B-52G, Eternal Guardian, International Air Tattoo, Fairford 89. Then you've got uh, last B-52 built. So that's 94040, isn't it? Yeah. So 946140. Um, yeah, so there we go. And then we've got over here, we've got the camouflage schemes for the Gs and Hs. Or well, the G should I say? Yes, yeah, it says H's, but I think it's just G's. There we go. So, all in all, for two pound or two pound ninety, whatever it is, is a bargain. So, I'm chancing touching this because it's a scrap decor. If this was a proper model, I probably wouldn't do it. But we can see that they look to be going down. It looks like it's pulling in quite nicely. So I'm going to leave that and let it dry and then uh, we, won't, we won't do any decking until we've actually seen how that dries. Okay, so this has been about five minutes now. Um, and if I can catch it in the light, I should be able to show you. You can see the decal here. And you can, sorry about my nails guys, they're gross. Um, you can see here that the decal is wrinkling up around where those panel lines are. That is the point where you need to leave it alone. Don't touch it, don't panic. Um, it's absolutely fine. That is what's supposed to happen. It will go down. So what you do is you leave that like that and then once you see it starting to dry out you can put some more on. So you've got some here. The other thing is when you've got micro set and sole always dedicate the brush to decor work because what you don't want to do is use ordinary paint brushes. So you can very lightly brush them on here. If you use your ordinary paint brushes and you happen to have some solvent thinners or whatever it's still in the brush then what will happen it will um it will actually attack that deck all like crazy um i can show you <clears throat> if i remember i will show you in this video the effects of using you can use like tamiya extra thin you can use mr kind of leveling thinners and all these different products these solvents that will really really make the decals go I did a Bandai um, 170 second scale Y fighter, Y wing, and the only way I could get the instrument panel to go down was actually using um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinners, which is this one here, and it's a pretty strong solvent paint thinner, and uh, that actually made it go down. But what it does, it dissolves the decal straight away. It just dissolves it, and so if you touch it, it's like wet paint. So you need to be very, very careful. So I can, if I think of it, I'll show you that in this video with some scrap decals. But there we go, you can see it's how it's wrinkled up. There now, just leave it, let it go, and it'll do its own thing. And that's a good sign. When it wrinkles up, that means it's going to pull in and almost look painted on. Um, so, yeah, looking like these decals might be quite nice, actually. So, anyway, um, the first thing I'm going to do is get this bit of a, a bit of a better finish on here. So, I'm going to come in with a, what have I got here? I've got two and a half thousand grit sponge. And I'm just going to, I should have left some water down here, shouldn't I? I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture, just a touch. And then just gently sand around this area. Try and stay away from those raised panel lines. Literally just a few rubs, just to try and smooth it out a bit. Get a cotton bud. Wipe it off. Use my finger. Here we go. And let's just smooth that area out slightly. It's just taking the nibs off the surface. Here we go. Do the same on the other side. You could go coarser if you want to, but the trouble is you always run that chance of rubbing through the paint and then you've got a whole load of hurt. And what I'm trying to do, if you listen here, hear the difference? It's just literally taking those few little top bits off. I mean, you can go over the whole thing if you want to, just to try and improve it. But I'm not really worried about that too much. So, um, that's what we're going to do on the, all the areas now. It's only the actual um, the actual fin that's got this rough paint on it. And what this was, I used a um, a black 
uh, acrylic Halfords paint, not a primer. And I think it's sort of basically just attacked the surface of the plastic. So we've got this, this roughish finish. But it's not a problem on a military aircraft like this. If it was a car body or something, obviously it would be a problem. But uh, I'm not going to worry about it on this one. Um, if anything, it's going to be good for adding effects because the roughness will pick up and hold any weathering pigments or whatever we've got on there. So, there you go. so what I've got to do now is get some gloss coat on in the areas where the decals are going to go. Okay, so for clears, there are many, many different products on the market. Some of which I've tried, some I haven't, some I've got, some I've have I've got and haven't tried. So this is at the my moment at, at the moment my favourite. This is the Alclad 2 Aqua Gloss um, ALC 600. This stuff is amazing. You don't shake it, you don't stir it, you don't do anything. You just pour it into your airbrush, and then whatever I don't use, I pour back. Um, a lot of people think that's disgusting, but I do it. Uh, only downside with it is it tends to gunge up on the top of the bottle. Um, so you need to be careful if you don't get any bits and pieces in your airbrush, but uh, you can always filter it or whatever. So that one there is great. Straight out of the bottle, into your airbrush, spray it. No fuss, no hassle. It's obviously you need to be wearing um, equipment or having a um, ventilation or whatever, but it's not bad that it's going to stink the whole house out. That's not to be confused with this one. This is, again, Alclad 2 Lacquers, and this is a lacquer clear coat gloss. Um, it's a lot more smelly. Um, and it's a lot worse for your health. Yeah, it's it's quite strong smelling. Um, it's. I'm just wondering if it's an enamel or, or a solvent based product, but um, it, it says contains mineral spirits. I haven't used this. That uh, this reminded me why now because if you're going to go over and use uh, weathering and everything on top of it, if it's a um, enamel product, the enamel weathering will attack it. Whereas it doesn't attack this one. So you're better off with that one. Um, there's my phone going. That's going to be some sort of sales thing. So um, this one here. We've got a polyurethane gloss varnish from Fieho. Never tried it. Never used it. It looks quite thick to me. Uh, again, not smelly. Um, but I haven't tried it. If you know what it's like, let me know. It says it can be used directly from the bottle with a 0.4 um, airbrush without dilution. Well, I don't think you're going to spray that with a 0 0.4 airbrush. Look how thick it is. You can see how thick that is. And if you look here, you can see how thick it is. It's, uh, it's like syrup. This one here, MRP Super Clear, absolutely brilliant, brilliant stuff. Again, health and safety hazards, not very good for your health at all, um, but it is a very good product. Um, the funny thing with MRP, they do a gloss, they do a semi-gloss, and they do a semi-matte, and I'd love to know what the difference is. I can't tell. But um, yeah, really, really nice products. Ready to use straight out of the bottle, straight into your airbrush. When you finish, pour it back, whatever. Um, this one here, good old favourite X22. Thin it with um, Tamiya thinners or with Mr. Cut 11 thinners or whatever you want. Brilliant stuff. Um, dries rock hard. Really, really good. Only trouble with it is it does tend to shrink back quite a lot. So you need quite a few coats if you thin it for airbrushing. This one here, again, I haven't tried yet, but I will do. This is the Lacquer Paints LP9 Clear. Um, it's going to be brilliant. I know it's going to be brilliant, but it's going to have a downside in that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's very strong. So it's going to stink the house out. You're going to make sure you have no pets about, no kids or anything. If you've got birds in your room or whatever, don't be using stuff like this. You're going to kill them. Um, or at worst, give them lung infection. Or at best, give them lung infections. So, um, yeah, extraction, do it outdoors, mask, windows open ventilation you know everything all the health and safety stuff so that's my selection and as I say I'm going to use this one I mean if you look at all of the bottles I've got here this is the one that's been used the most because it's just so easy and it's such a good product and I know that the decals are going and it won't attack it in fact I'm going to do a test with this I'm going to spray this on that scrap wing and then I'm going to try put some enamel thinners and see if it attacks it and while we're on the subject you can see how that decal is pulling down now I can catch it in the light and there's no silvering or anything and it's um it's still got a couple of wrinkles showing there but they will probably pull down and if they don't what we'll do is we'll sand them out yes you heard me right we can sand them out you can i'm not sure if it's going to be take it it might tear it off but let's give it a go you can take this is a two and a half thousand grit sponge you can actually sand your decals you can see i've smoothed that out now yeah you can actually 
by sanding them you can actually break them in you can make them look worn like with this if you've got this worn paint effect here like you can see this has been sanded there that's that's um that's been sprayed on but you can actually sand decals to remove some of the artwork and it will make them blend in there you can see there how that's gone down in those gaps and everything so I think these decals are going to do really well anyway um I'm waffling let's get some of this clear down and then I'll come back okay so I have now found my favorite new clear coat and that basically is the Tamiya X22 mixed with this new Accus acquisition of mine which I've put away sorry this Tamiya lacquer thinner is retarded type Ed sent me this over from premium hobbies I love it um, I have always been a big big fan of the Mr. Color leveling thinners this one I mean the, the retarder basically gives it the chance to, to level out and what I found is with the um, with the Tamiya X22 quite often you spray it and it remains quite gritty until you've got sort of four or five coats on this kind of lets it level out and um, if I can show you here I've done some samples and this is the Alquad Alquad Alclad lacquer uh, clear this is the MRP clear and they've all had like two coats and this is the Tamiya X22 and although you can see that underneath the surface it's quite rough and dusty and everything I didn't bother cleaning off I just want to see how it reacts you can see here the Alclad has got a very nice sheen to it you can see the MRP is kind of pulled back in and the X22 has also got a nice sheen to it so perfectly good for decals that's all I'm, that's all I ever use clears for it's just for decaling um, I don't ever really do any much much gloss stuff so um, I've done it on the actual fuselage itself if I can show you it's sort of big and cumbersome but if you look on the sides of the fuselage here you can see the the gloss there and it's it's perfectly adequate for decals they've got to go down lovely onto that and I go underneath where the um, shark's teeth are going to go I've also done some areas on the wings which you can see there okay and then on the sides of the fuselage as well here ready for the stars and bars wherever they're going to be but um yeah it'll be careful not to touch it too much in fact i think i've just put a finger mark in it not to worry it doesn't matter but um anyway yeah so i'm going to let that dry off now let that go off for an hour or so before we do any decaling and um the other thing i want to do is with these with these bits here i can sort of show you some more this this would be kind of a little bit of a decal tutorial um to show you how beautifully they go down this one here this is the one we put down the sample one and you can see that it's pulled down into those panel lines lovely um i've also put a matte varnish over the top of it just to see what it looks like and you can see here where the edges are this is where your edges of your decal are now you can sand them out um as i showed you before and i probably will do that on the b52 but the other thing you do if you cut really really close to the edge like i'm showing you then you don't see that because you've got the color change from the camouflage to the the blue of the stars and bars so you don't really see that nip because there's a color change there but anyway we'll um we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so uh there we go i'm really happy with that really happy that it's come out and um this this tammy x22 is is good really good with that thinners so um thinners obviously makes all the difference so i'll see you in could be a day or so for me but it'll be a few couple of seconds for you and we'll start to get some decals on okay slight interlude here if you remember it's been a few hours now this decals all dried out and gone down lovely as you can see the one i put on there um on here the um the clear coats have all gone off it's been about i don't know eight or nine hours since i put them on so they've gone off lovely this is the alclad lacquer um if you remember I said I wanted to try this with some enamel so I know this isn't actually specifically the B52 build but it, it comes in with Declan because I'm also going to show you if, if you are new to the hobby you may well have heard of people using like Tamiya extra thin and um, leveling thinners to actually make the decals go down and when you have got decals that really don't want to go down particularly hobby boss ones are funny enough these are hobby boss decals um, they can be a nightmare to make them go in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try some enamel thinners on here see if it affects that because if you remember it said it contains mineral spirit so we we need to know going forward we need to know if we use this gloss coat on our models and then use enamel washes and stuff will it attack this clear coat 
Look how it's going, look how it's crazy across there, isn't that weird how it's spidering? Look at that, it's mental. So, does it attack it? Yes, it does. So, that's something worth bearing in mind, guys. Yeah, look at that, it's, um, it's actually attacked it. So, that's, I'll just get it out of the drawer so you can see which one I'm talking about. It's not this one we're talking about. That's the Aqua Gloss. That one's fine. But this one, this is the Alclad 2 Lacquers Clear Coat Gloss, is dissolved by enamel thinner. So don't use that on your model and then use enamel washes afterwards. Um, particularly if you're going to work them and brush them around because it's going to affect it like that. So there we go. Now we know. So um, that's that. You see, I can put it on the, on the Tamiya one. And it shouldn't affect it at all. Let's do it uh, where it's less shiny. Because I want to keep the shiny bit for putting the decal on. You see it's not affecting that at all. I can just wipe my finger over there and it's it's not affected it whatsoever. And we should find the same with the MRP. So if you're going to use a clear coat. You can see there it hasn't affected it at all. So if you're going to use a clear coat, you're better off staying with MRP or Tamiya. Stay away from that Alclad lacquer. Okay, so now we know. Now I know as well, which is good. So, I'll get some water on the bench. Put that brush to one side because it's got enamel thinners on. When you're working with decals and things, guys, you need to be really careful with your brushes. Because if I now went and used this to apply a solvent or a setting solution, it's got enamel thinners in it, it's going to attack it. Terrible. So... And I'll show you how bad these things attack. So let's get these, let's get three of these decals down first. So we'll just get those wet, pull them out of the water, don't let them sit in the water. Let's just pull them out. Really, you want to be using warm water for the best effects, but I don't generally bother because you generally find that after a few minutes the water's gone cold anyway, so you're not going to keep getting up and replacing it. You can get those little um, heaters that plug into a USB. That keep the water at a certain temperature and they work quite well um, so if you are really sort of adamant about having your water um, warm then that's the way to go so I've got my this is the brush I've used with my setting solutions so I'm not going to be putting this anywhere near any of these solvents I'm just going to use this for for this so I'll wait for these to go off wait for them to start to move around I think what I will do when it comes to doing the aircraft, when we do like the big ones, like the Yusuf and the um, the shark's teeth, I think what I'll do is I'll use warm water for them because they are big. And it's, it helps to soften them a little bit as well when it's warm. You see what I mean? These Hobby Boss decals, I really don't get on with them. I, I don't like them at all. But we're going to look at ways of making them settle down. There you go, that one's moving, that one's moving, and that one's moving. There we are. So we've got them moving now. The good thing is with Hobby Boss decals, they're like bloody lead sheet. They're so thick you can um, you can pull them about and they won't get damaged. Right, so in fact I'll use this brush. Let's grab a pair of tweezers. So I'm going to get this one first and put it on here on the shiny bit of the... And we'll put it across these panel lines here. I hope you can see on the camera. Yeah, you can. So I'll put some water on the model first. If you notice, I'm not using Solve, a micro sole or set. I've managed to lift the end of that one. So we'll get the brush under it and just roll it out. There we go. We'll just position that there. And then we'll grab a cotton bud. Roll the cotton bud over the top. Just push the deck out, and there's something seriously wrong here because as I'm rolling it, it wants to lift. There we go, just pushing all the water out. It's kind of trying to lift as I push it down, it's weird. It's almost like it's some um, like a cake tray, it's almost like it's concave and it doesn't want to go down. So, there we go, so that's that one there on the X22. So that one's gone down. You can see it hasn't really got into any of the panel lines or anything. It's just literally sat there on the surface because it's so thick. Okay, so then the next one we shall put onto the MRP. We'll find a shiny-ish bit. 
which is here. I want to cross some panel lines. There we go, that's that one down. So we can just roll that out like that. So this is the standard way of applying decals. You haven't got any set or anything. You just, it's your first model. You don't have all the, the stuff for putting decals down. Absolutely fine, just do it like this. But um, you can't expect them to kind of take on the shape of what's underneath. So we'll put this one here where it's nice and shiny. There we go. Looks like an arsenal crest or something. Right, so that can go there. Just rolling it down with a cotton bud and there we are. Now if we use warm water they will probably get out a bit better and you can see the carrier film around the edge has kind of taken on on these two. It's kind of taken on the the forms but um, nothing much. So you will hear and you may well see people talk about using extra thin on your decals and it's great because some decals like particularly these Hobby Boss ones they don't react very well to anything. There is a Tamiya decal set, uh, uh, decal set and solution you can get which and there's also solver set but I'm not sure if they're available in this country in the UK. I don't think they are. So Tamiya extra thin will settle your decals down but you need to be very very careful because it will attack the paint that's underneath so you literally I need to get some more on that brush I need to get a nice drop of it and just put it on like that okay just let it sit there and it'll evaporate you don't want to be brushing it around for too long because what will happen is you'll actually start to pull the surface up now I've put a little bit too much on there so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the brush off and I'm just going to use the brush to wick some up. Which it doesn't want to, you can see I've torn the deco there because I've just literally just tapped it. So just let that dry. And I'm going to leave that to dry, turn the camera off and then once it's evaporated I'll come back. Okay, so that one's drying now. So I'm going to use some Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners, again different brush. So I'm just going to get a drop on this brush here and I'm going to put some on there like that and just leave it. That's it, job done. So we'll see what that one does. I've got a little bit on the paint there so it may actually mark the paint. You need to be a little bit more careful than I was but we shall see. But as long as you don't touch it you're absolutely fine. It's the same as when you're building your model. I've talked about it many times. If you drip some Mr. S Mr. S Mr. Servicer, some Tamiya Extra Thin on the plastic just leave it. Don't touch it. If you accidentally, you know, some bare plastic here, if you accidentally get a drop of Extra Thin on like that, if you start trying to wipe it and stuff you mark the plastic. If you just leave it, as you can see it evaporates really quickly and it'll leave a stain but it won't really damage the plastic very much at all. Okay, so just leave it and let it evaporate. Same as this, just leave it, let it evaporate. Job done. And then on this one, I'm going to go with enamel thinners. So we've got the same brushes I used before. I'm just going to put some enamel thinners on there. Like that. So this is basically when you get really, really tough decals that won't settle down, that won't pull in, this is ways of doing it. And the one I found to be most successful in the past is Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. This stuff does everything. Um, it, it's really, really good. I expect if you have balding issues like I do, if you rub it on your head, your hair will grow. No, I didn't say that. Don't try it. <laughs> it's just, I was just trying to make a joke. But um, you can see here, if you look up close, you can see how that decal is pulling down into the, into the grooves without me doing anything. This one doesn't seem to be doing much at all. And you can see that the Tamiya Extra Thin one is all wrinkled up. As it dries out, it may level out, we shall see. But um, to be fair, there was a lot on there. So, but um, as you can see, that one there would probably look absolutely fine under a, under a coat of gloss paint. So there we are, that's the, um, that's basically. Okay, so for the decaling, we're going to be using these, this S18 All Marks Decal Sheet. We're gonna try this out first. And I'm going to start with the tail because I want to try and experiment out on the monogram decals. So if these don't work very well, 
I'm going to need to use the monogram decals. If they do work very well, I can do an experiment with these so I can try something else later on. So um, what I'm going to do is get these out of here first. Now, if you remember, I said what you need to do is be using scissors rather than a knife. So because these are in here, we need to sort of work our way in. So I know that I need these stripes here, seven and nine, and I need these two six, seven, sevens here. And I also need that shark's mouth. So what I'm going to do is cut all the way along here. I'm also going to need those six, seven, sevens. So I'm going to cut all the way along there. Now, will I be using 10 and 11? No, I won't. I'll be using three and four. So I'm going to just cut around these here and I'll cut around them. And I'm not going to be using those double o eights, so or the one nines. Okay, so I can come around here now, and then I can cut, cut around here. Make sure I don't take the corner of that shark's mouth off. And we'll go around here, down here. We're going to need that B fifty two D insignia bit. Okay, and bear in mind, I'm not letting the scissors run out anywhere so I don't get that raised edge. And then I'm going to go down here. And across. And there's our decals there. Now I think that's everything we need for the B52D. So I can put that over there to one side. Never leave the decal sheet anywhere near the water because if you drip water on it, you will get a localised lift of the decal. You really don't want that. So be careful. So I'm going to go in here now and roughly cut out these. It's not normally good practice to try and do your precision cutting while you've got all the sheet in your hand because it's just too cumbersome. OK, so we can take that out of there. Now I know we're going to need that number six. So I'm going to come along here and cut in here as close as I can. Take them off and then I'm going to go up as close as I can to that seven. And then something to try and avoid is having any cutouts. So it'd be nice to go into that F and out again. But the trouble is then you're going to have like a flappy finger. The top of the F will be like a flappy finger sticking out. So... You really don't want that. Remember these deckers, as soon as you lift them up, they're just going to want to curl up on themselves. So there we go. Then we go up here, this seven here. Up there. And remember, as I said earlier, in case you missed it, this is only necessary on these type of decals where you haven't got the separated carrier film. This is like one big decal sheet, this one. OK, so there we go. And then I'm just going to nip that corner off of there. So there we go. This is all waste. No, this one's got that insignia, so that can go there. Again, put it out of the way of the water. And grab these bits of scrap paper and get rid of them. So I've got my warm water here and I'm going to take my tweezers. You need some tweezers. And I'm just going to lay, place that in the water. Dunk it in a couple of times and then put it on the bench down here out of the way. And then this one here, I'll do the same with. Just dunk it in and let it get nice and wet. And you can see down there, they're kind of curling up. A lot of people put them face down. Be very careful of that because if you've got anything on the bench that's activated by the water, like a drop of glue or something, then the decal might actually stick to the bench. So people put them face down in the water to stop them curling up because they generally curl up. So if you put them in the water face like that, they will often curl up on themselves, especially the bigger ones. So um, well, we can get all this out of the way. Bring into shock our fin. Okay, and we can see where the numbers are going to go on here and on here. Okay, so this isn't a high precision model, so 
I'm not going to be checking references to check the exact positioning, but I'm just going to assume that this is correct. Assuming I know is silly, but um, I'm just going to assume this is correct. So I've got my set and my sole, micro set and micro sole in my premium hobbies holder. There we go. And I've got my brush, which is dedicated to set and sole, as we said before. So I'm going to get some micro set and then brush it on here in the area where the decal is going to go. Now it's it's crazing away. It doesn't want to stay on the surface. That's OK, because when we put the decal down, it will all capillary under it. So we can pick this decal up. And we'll see if it's actually going to move. No, it's not ready yet. So I'm just going to give it another dip in the water and this one. Another quick dip. We just wait for them to go. Now, some decals, they're like instantly come off the paper. Some decals take forever. Um, I can't remember actual makes or names off the top of my head, but yeah, some of them really take forever. Some decals are very thin. Some decals are very thick. Some decals are very soft and compliant. Some decals are very brittle. It seems the older they get, the more brittle they are. So these here would probably be quite brittle. Um, but the the um, the Tamiya decals, for instance, are very brittle. They'll they'll crack very easily. Um, whereas your cartograph decals and stuff, they're going to be very very soft and pliable. So um, yes, we're ready to go now by the look of it. So just pick it up and try. Yep, yeah, we can see it's moving on the paper there. So I'm just going to give it another little quick dip in the water just to remove anything that I've put on the surface. We've got our micro set there. You can see it's sat there, all bubbled up on the surface. We're going to get this as near as we can and just position it on there and then move that paper out of the way. And then we can bring this down. And I'm just looking at this here. So the F, the F of USAF, if it doesn't want to move with a brush, just grab a pair of tweezers and just gently pull it. So the F of USAF it's got to be there, the top of that red line you can see here. And then the seven is going to point there. So there we go. So I want to make sure that's kind of horizontal. What I should have done was put a horizontal line on here. Uh, I should have marked it with a piece of tape or something, but I want it parallel with the bottom there. So I'm going to take something which is of an equivalent width. Now that's too wide. Um, boulder dash. What am I going to use? That's too wide, isn't it? Yes, that's too wide as well. Um, I'll have to fold this premium hobbies thank you slip. Okay, so we make that a little bit narrower. This will also be a good height guide for the other side. So um, hold that there so it's parallel with the bottom edge, like so. And then we can look at that decal, and if anything, I think it needs to come down a touch on the front. Okay, so there we are, that's nice and parallel. So that's gone down and that's now in position. So what we can do now is with a cotton bud, we're not going to rub it, we're going to just take the cotton bud, I'm going to use a brand new one just in case it's got anything on it. So we're just going to take a cotton bud and just literally roll it over the surface. Just like so. It's just pushing the water and the air out from underneath it. Okay, as you can see, it's... It'll start to go down. It takes a bit of time. It's got to go down over those raised panel lines. That's all going to be okay. It'll sort itself out. And there we are, there it is in position. So we've got all the moisture out of it now. We can put quite a bit of pressure on there, rolling it down, pushing it down. Okay, and then we can come along with what I do. A lot of people use separate brushes, I just use the same one. Come along with, oh, sorry, we need micro set. We need more micro set on the top. So just brush some more micro set on the top, let that start to work and just leave that on there for a few minutes 
So I'm going to leave that for a few minutes and then I'll come back because obviously we can't turn it over and start working on that side because we'll just push it into this side. Right, literally three minutes later, I've just gone over the cotton bud again. Now I'm just going to wipe the micro set off, get some micro sole and just brush that onto the surface quite liberally and let that do its thing. Okay, there we go. So we'll just leave that and we'll... Uh, We'll come back to that in a minute. So both sides are done now. So I've done this side, used my Premium Hobbies folded piece of card as a gauge to get the right height and get it all square. And then sort of look down on it to get the positions four and a half correct. But um, here we go. You also notice on these decals, there is a sort of white shadow around them. Now I don't know if they're at a register or if they're supposed to be like that, but I like quite a look at that, it gives it like a 3D look. So um, if this was, uh, like I said, if this was a high precision model that I'd spent hours rescribing and everything and adding resin and etching everything to, then I would be uh, a bit more concerned. But um, with this one, I'm not that concerned. Um, purely because it's an out of the box build and it's a very old kit and it's a fairly simple build. So here we go. So they, that can be uh, left to dry now, and then if it needs any more work around these um, these raised panel lines, we can just give it a gentle slip with a knife. I won't do anything off camera, I'll show you everything I do if I have to work them at all. But um, they seem to go down very, very nice. They have a funny white glue look to them until they dry out and then the glue sort of disappears. So uh, we'll leave that to dry, I can put that over there. And then uh, we'll come back to that later. So in the meantime, what I want to do is put this monogram decal on here. Oops, look how that just fell apart. This is because the decals are old. And this is where I think I'm going to have a problem with the... Um, let's get some micro set on here. This is where I think I'm going to have a problem with the larger decals. Because remember, I've got to use the stars and bars and the... That doesn't want to move. There we go. I've got to use the stars and bars and the uh, USAF from the monogram decal sheet. So we'll see how we get on with that. But this is just falling apart. So let's see if I can just gently brush over that. There we go. It's gone down. Kind of. I'll put some more micro set on the top of it. It's just falling to bits because it's so old. There we are. I think what I might do with the USAF decal is cut it into four separate letters and then just line it all up. So there we are. That's that one gone on there. So uh, let me do some more and see how we get on. Right, so I've got the wing here. I've got it supported on a on a sanding stick so it doesn't all rock about. And we've got this um, Stars and Bars decal here. Now, this is going to fall apart, I think, when I put it in the water, but we shall see. I'll have to try and find something else if it does. But um, I want to get this on here. Basically, looking at here, it looks like the the back edge, the, the back edge of the Stars and Bars off camera are kind of in line with that uh, walkway line there so that's what we're kind of aiming for and this engine pylon sort of pokes into the corner in here so it's going to be kind of there is the position we want it in so I'm going to um, place it in the water okay you can see there how it's curled up and that should uncurl itself Just give it another bit of wetness. There we go. And that should uncurl itself and probably pull itself to pieces, but I'm sure I've got something of a similar size in another kit I can use. But um, we shall see. In fact, I'll let that do its thing and then I'll come back rather than have you watching paint dry. Right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. 
So it looks like it's done, it's just falling to bits. <laughs> um, let's see if we can make it work. Let's see if Nigel can pull this off. That's funny because just now there's a huge crack across here and yet it seems to be still dragging that part with it. So I'm going to get some Microsoft. Yeah, not, maybe this is what's making it fall apart. I'm not really too bothered. I'm bound to have some stars in bars in something else. There we go. Oops. So let's just see if I can move this around without it falling apart. Use the brush. If you are a beginner, guys, you know, these, these old decals you really don't want to be using them because, um, you know, decaling is not the easiest thing in the world anyway. And I'm just trying to get lots of water on there. Get on there, go on. Um, and working with these old things is, is nigh on impossible. It's just, this is just going to fall to bits in a minute. I can feel it. What I'm trying to do is get it to move forward. It's going to stick to my finger and oh, it is. It doesn't want to move. Come on. I should have been more accurate with my um, placing of it. Just lift the edges, it'll make the water go underneath. A good bit of reaction. Yeah, it doesn't want to play ball this one. See it's got a great big crack in it there, look. I thought I saw it move then. By all means guys, fast forward if you want to, but I know there's some out there that uh some out there would like to see how how to make this work or not, whatever the case may be. I would like to use a brush with longer bristles, but I don't want a chance using a brush that uh, may have something on it. Come on. You can see all the cracks appearing in it now. It's literally just falling to bits. And it really will not slide. And I really don't want to leave it there because it's not in the right place. It will bug me forever. My stomach go in there. Way, there we go. That's exactly what I did want to happen, but it may be a blessing in disguise. Right, so we've obviously got an area here which is stuck down. So I want the bars parallel to that line there. I want the engine pointing into the corner, so I need it further out this way. There we go. Kind of like that. Now we need to get this back end to move. Obviously the middle part of the decal is stuck down, look, that's what's uh, 
that's what's prevented it from moving. Oh dear. Remember I said I was going to make this look beat up. Well, this could be a, a good excuse for using it like this. In fact, I, I probably shouldn't have used microset. And that's probably what's made it stick down so well. There we go, it's starting to lift now. If you haven't fallen asleep yet, well done. See the brush poking through it there, look where it's cracked. Come on, there we go, it's going to start moving now. That bit there doesn't want to move. There we are, now it should be up. Nope, oh, is it going? Yes, it is. This bit here doesn't want to let go. If we end up with a couple of tiny white bits, I'm not really worried about that because, as I say, it w it's going to be beat up anyway. Come on, just slide. Go on. Just go into position. Okay, I'll take my cotton bud. I'm literally just using the weight of the cotton bud. I'm not putting any weight on it at all. It's bloody stuck down again, hasn't it? There we go. Oh, come on. I think I'll just put it in position and leave it. Just try tamping it down. This is purely because I do not want to use those lovely Revell decals I've got for a B52D because I've got another couple of kits and if I build another one it would be nice to do it with all those stencils and stuff on it. Right, so that's that one in there. We've got to get this bit off of here so I'm going to just wet it. I'm going to wet the model. I'm not going to put any micro set down this time. Got a big puddle to sit in. It's like a jigsaw, isn't it? As I say, I'm not working for perfection. Because I want to beat the living daylights out of it. That was my stomach, nothing else. It's like when, we, when you want it to slide, it won't slide. And then as soon as you put a cotton bud near it, it bloody starts moving. What a pain. There we go. Oh, look at that. See that lift then? Uh, so I know it's not perfect, but um, it's going to have to do. Now, what I'm going to do now is try and put some microset on it. all these stray bits of decal away otherwise they'll stick down as well I'm not happy with that left hand side there There we go. 
was moving now. I think it's gone back exactly the same place again. These little tiny bits, they don't have love to stick down. I'm just trying to close up that crack. Oh, look at that. See, I should have left it alone, shouldn't I? There we go, that's going to have to do, guys. What do you think of that? I think a little bit of a touch-up on the white bits. I think it'll look absolutely fine. <laughs> so, um, I want to try and get some micro set on it just to... Just to make it settle. Especially in the areas where there's cracks. Here we are. I better get it all over it now, otherwise it's going to pull about. I'm going to regret this, I know I am. It's going to suddenly just go boom. There we are. We'll leave that to dry. Okay, so now it's going to get a layer of micro sole, which is the red one. I'm just going to brush it on very gently. And hopefully this will help it to pull down. And I'm going to leave that and not touch it again at all. So I am going to call that a day for this video but just before we go we'll have another look at these see how these have gone down yep we need a little bit more of the uh, microsole on there there we go Yeah, once they've had a clear coat over them, they'll look absolutely fine. So let that dry off overnight and then we can come back to it tomorrow. I'll see you all later, guys. Um, this has been a bit of a long one, I think, and probably quite boring. But hopefully somebody's picked learned something from this. Because sometimes if you've got a really old kit and you've got old decals, then you've got no choice. But, um, you know, as I say, this is going to be all weathered and streaked and beaten up anyway. So I was going to sand the decals and try and or bleach them a bit anyway so we'll you know I'm not really too worried about that this US, US Air Force one is going to be a nightmare I think what I'll do is cut it into four sections mark out on the wing where each individual point is so I'll mark a point there a point there 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 and there and then I can put it down I don't know if they actually 
yeah they're, again they're parallel with this this rear walkway here not the front so it's going to be quite difficult but we'll get there um we'll give it a go we should not want not hey <laughs> right see you later uh thanks for watching bye for now